Do you remember back in 19, I think it was 1996, and Van Halen were coming out with a greatest hits package, and they were in the process, or they had already broken up with Sammy Hagar, and they reached back out to David Lee Roth, and they re they recorded two new songs. Uh, one was Me Wise Magic, and the other one was Can't Get This Stuff No More. We'll talk about Van Halen another day, but today I want to talk about one of the best sides of music I've ever heard in my life. I have two different pressings of this record. And when I listen to this record, I think of Can't Get This Stuff No More. Because Charlie Watts is gone. Bill Wyman is never going to play bass again on a regular basis with the Rolling Stones. Let's face it, the Rolling Stones are a touring nostalgia act. Yes, they might be working on new music right now or recently. But when I think about the Stones, I think about one of the last great albums that they put out. It's 1981's Tattoo You. Like I mentioned, I have two pressings. I have uh, a U.S. Monarch pressing. And I have a U.S. Europa Disc pressing. Very cool cover art. These were actually photographs that Mick Jagger had laying around. He didn't know what to do with them. And he had an artist add the kind of tattoo effect into, uh, into the existing photograph. That's where the cover art came from. Um, the early issues, of course, came in a heavy-duty cardstock sleeve. And I want to talk about side two on this album. Side two was called The Ballad Side. Side one with Start Me Up, uh, Little TNA, other songs, was the rockier side. As I've gotten older, as I've gotten to know this album, as I've played this album over the decades in various formats, I've gotten to love side B, which is the ballad side. Um, and of course, that leads off with worried about you. Worried about you. Let's backtrack. This entire album is a bit of uh was a bit of an anomaly at that point in time in the juncture of the timeline of the Rolling Stones 1980 1981 these guys were going to go out on tour they needed to put out it would have been nice to have a new album to tour uh from and what happened is Longtime producer of the band and good confidant, a good friend, Chris Kimsey, a fantastic producer, also a mixer, a recording engineer. He basically went back in the vaults and knew that there was a lot of leftover stuff from the emotional rescue sessions. There was stuff left over from Black and Blue. There was stuff going all the way back to Goat's Head Soup. Uh, with Mick Taylor on, on, on some of these tracks. Worried About You is a, um, a pretty well-formed song that they dropped uh, out of the Black and Blue sessions. And that amazing guitar solo is not Ron Wood. It's not Keith Richards. It's not Mick Taylor. It's a guy called it's a guy named Wayne Perkins. And it's one of the best fucking guitar solos on any Rolling Stones album. Just treat your ears to the setup of that thing and just bask in the glory. I started talking about Charlie Watts and Bill Wyman. Oh my god, these guys 
It just doesn't get any better than this, ladies and gentlemen. If you listen to Worried About You, and Jagger's vocals are just amazing as well, but, and that and that backing vocal that's a little bit behind the beat from, from uh, Richards, fucking amazing. But, <laughs> if you listen to the rhythm section, so, so, so smooth, so supple, uh, Bill Wyman's bass lines just kind of glide through this song and kind of underpin and structure, lay a foundation for for this song to exist. And then you've got the in-the-pocket, the incredible feel of, of the late Charlie Watts. Man, uh, and so much power coming from a wiry guy who was all of, uh, you know, 150 pounds or 165 pounds, probably lighter as he aged and got, you know, ill. Uh, but Charlie Watts on this album is an absolute beast. Um, and then we've got Billy Preston on keyboards in the background on Worried About You. It's an incredible song. And it's an incredible side of music. <laughs> All the right components are there to make the original U.S. pressing the one that you want to seek out. It was mastered by Bob Ludwig at Master Disc. Um, the Monarch pressing sounds really, really nice, um, but the Europa Disc has just a little more oomph to it, a little more bite. And I was impressed and surprised because uh, I did kind of a direct one-to-one -one shootout here in my house. And um, I enjoyed it. <laughs> the album was uh, mixed by one of the all-time greats. Whenever I used to read liner notes when I was growing up, I would always rec or I would always I would always recognize Bob Clear Mountain. Who the hell's Bob Clear Mountain? Well, one of the best mixing engineers in the business, and one of the legendary mixing engineers. And he probably has as much to do with the incredible sound on this thing as anyone else. Uh, but Kimsey, Chris Kimsey, was the recording engineer. So they delivered an, an incredible mix uh, to Robert Ludwig. And, and he, you know, I don't know what he had to do to this thing. Probably not much because it this thing just had so much power, so much strength, so much oomph in various places, uh, and especially shines, I think, even more on side two. Um, some of the other songs, though, all the other songs, <laughs> um, we've got Tops, we've got number three, uh, Heaven, uh, track four, No Use in Crying, and track five, Waiting on a Friend, a gorgeous song. You know, they did that kind of famous video there in the East Village of New York standing in front of the building uh, on the uh, on the stoop of the, the same building that was photographed for physical graffiti. So a little bit of trivia there. And then they walked into a neighboring bar and uh, were, I think, shooting pool in the video. Check it out. There's that label for the record. Uh, famously, it is uh, catalog number COC16052. Go check out. Google the Absolute Sounds uh, list of audiophile-esque recordings and you'll find this record on it. Um, people, if you know, you know, this is one of the best sounding Rolling Stones records and even importantly, above the sound of it, you've got to love the music and I love Side 2 of uh, Tattoo You. One of the all-time great sides of music. I just had to talk about it because I was I took it out and played it again uh, very recently within the last 48 hours. And um, you know it's getting it's getting uh, pricey out there. I went to a record show and I saw this record in three different booths. Price between twenty and seventy dollars, 
And uh, those were all original U.S. pressings. Uh, by the way, this blows the kind of country of origin idea out of the water, at least on this, in this case. A lot of cases, in a lot of instances, it's the same. It's, in a lot of instances in different albums, it's a similar story with the Rolling Stones. It really depends on where was the album mastered, okay? So this was mastered in New York, master disc, uh, Ludwig. I think that is the, that's the pressing, uh, that's the origin story for this record at least, is the U.S. Uh, but go look for a master disc with RL in both sides of the dead wax. Look for that oval EDP, which is Europa disc. Sometimes they were uh, plated at Europa Disc and pressed at different places, like the Monarch press that I have. And in other cases, they're actually plated and pressed at Europa Disc. Like I said earlier, my Europa Disc shines just a little bit brighter than the Monarch pressing I have. I dug up some quotes on the internet, and um, I thought this was a good one from, from Mick back in 1995. That's an old record. It's all a lot of old tracks that I dug out, and it was very strange circumstances. Chris Kimsey and I went through all the tracks from those two previous records. It wasn't all outtakes. Um, some of it was old songs. And then I went back and found previous ones, like Waiting on a Friend from Goat's Head Soup. They're all from different periods. Then I had to write lyrics and melodies. A lot of them didn't have anything, which is why they weren't used at the time. Uh, because they weren't complete. They were just bits, or they were from early takes. And then I put them all together in an incredibly cheap fashion. I recorded in this place in Paris in the middle of winter in a warehouse on the outskirt of, outskirts of the city. And I recorded some of it in a broom cupboard, literally, where we did the vocals. The rest of the band were hardly involved, and then I took it to Bob Clear Mountain, who did this great job of mixing so that it didn't sound like it was from different periods. And that's a, a quote from Mick in 1995. Everybody, make sure you have a copy of Tattoo You in your collection and do yourself a favor and take out that record and put on side two sometime soon. Thank me later.